Phil Sullivan touched countless lives during his all too brief journey among us. Everywhere he went, he elevated people. He provided inspiring leadership. He revealed and encouraged talent, creativity, passion. As a result, his own gifts and talents were multiplied at every stop along his life road, resonating through our world farther than we can ever truly know. Phil didn't plant the seeds, but he nurtured them like few others. If we are but vegetables in the garden of life, Phil was certainly the fertilizer. In fact, he was full of it. Most of the stories I can't tell here tonight. I hope you cut this out. Is this gonna be on camera? He knew how to make everything, everything fun. Everything was just fun. Working with Phil was the most fun you could have with your clothes on. Yes, he was the best time I ever had when there wasn't sex involved. I think we always had our clothes on. I, I know for a fact I always had mine on. Okay. Good times. I'd never had a boss who really wanted to go and have fun like that. He would never make you laugh so hard that you'd wet your pants, though. He never did that. <laughs> he and I died laughing all the time. The truth is, more than once. <laughs> Just really juvenile stuff. I mean, we would go to lunch all the time, and I never knew what was going to happen. So we'd go out to lunch many times a week and uh, generally make fun of people. We had an I hate list. <laughs> he'd order his lunch and he'd say, and my mom will have the same thing. We gossiped, we laughed, we were usually completely exhausted. I kept thinking, don't these people ever work? He used all of his other leadership and confidence, but he made life fun and brought that all together. And they're having way too much fun. And we actually did some work, but Phil had that- Martha, we did a lot of work. <laughs> He's out there shaking hands and greeting people and everybody in the world seems to know him and I'm just going, this isn't the guy that she's telling me about. When I said, would you be my maid of honor? I think he said something like, I'd be delighted, <laughs> you know? First the photographer thought we were bride and group and I was like, no, 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 no. But then Phil did hold the bouquet. He lit up like a Christmas tree any time somebody wanted to play a practical joke on somebody else. I remember somehow by hook and by crook, uh, ending up in charge of the convention choir. And uh, I wasn't really old enough to have done that, and I certainly wasn't musically talented enough to have done that. <laughs> At least I didn't think so, but Phil thought I was. So early in the process, a couple of sisters showed up because they wanted to be part of the choir, and I was feeling exceptionally snobby, and they didn't sing very well. And so I just told them no. And I think maybe whoever had been in that job before me was a little more politic than that, because Phil, I think, got an earful from their mom the next day. So a couple weeks went by, and it was time for the convention to start. And I think I was 19 or 20, and I was scared to death. It was maybe 10 minutes before the start of the whole show. Phil comes running up to the little stage, and he says, their mom's here. She needs to have a word with you, and they've got their instruments with them. Uh, and I, I thought I was gonna sh myself. Uh, and then he burst out laughing. So we were doing a convention planning meeting, and we were trying to put together a promotional brochure for the convention. And it was like, we needed something really great that said, you know, the youth convention is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. And so Phil said, say it. And so this person said, the youth convention is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. And so he said, it's been said that the youth convention's ever, and it went on the brochure. I can't, I can't even talk about the day that we all called him various and sundry different oh names. Oh my gosh, yes, right. He bullshit his way through it, and yet it was for the greater good. But then he went to the board and he said, you know, I know my staff must love me because they all said This one said that one said he had a little slush fund, and so, you know, a lot of convention meetings would happen there, you know, they'd go downtown or to Tubbs and have a meeting in the hot tub. <laughs> we love that he was a faithful man, and he was organized, but he was incredibly irreverent. And just... <laughs> what did you not love about that? It was, you know, legitimate, because he was, I mean, they'd like, they'd come back with, you know, clipboards with, like, wet, Plastic running, on. you know, ink. 
Adults have to Even go through when he classes now <laughs> on how to be appropriate with teens. Oh, Phil would not pass he any of those classes. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure why they trusted him with seniors. Did, did he ever behave inappropriately? I grab the phone and it doesn't, it's like st sticky. Oh, shoot. <laughs> he, yeah, he did. He, he totally did. <laughs> he had, the night before, taken rubber cement and glued every item on my desk to the desk. My colleagues around the country probably got sick to death of hearing me talk about how I have the best boss in the whole world. Every paper clip, every piece of paper, every pen, every pencil, my pink little memo pad that we used to take notes on, you know, messages, all of it glued to the, and he just thought it was the most hilarious thing. And it, it was pretty darn funny. When I first met Phil, that was... 1976. And he was uh, holding a little baby boy in his arms, Damien. That's what it was like growing up. It was just that it's it's a hoot. Just so much fun and laughter and, you know, his irreverent sense of humor. Then I got to meet Rose. Rose came to a, um, a fundraiser. And they said Rose was shy and, and uh, not like Phil. But Rose was phenomenal. What a phenomenal woman. One time we were shopping at the Bond, and if you've met my mother, she has no sense of direction, which of course my dad does. So we walked around the center floor at the Bond, around the big, around the, the big loop, and every time him or I would point out something different to her. And the entire time she thought we were in a whole different part of the store. <laughs> he made growing up so much fun. You know, and things like Christmas, so magical. He was like a wizard in a lot of ways, where he could find the magic in anybody. He was kind of Gandalf, which I think he'd like me referring to him as Gandalf. He had a way to make every person feel special, but more than make them feel special, he let every person realize the specialness within themselves. It's a real mark of a human being to see the impact he's made on not just all of us here, but hundreds and hundreds of other people. Uh, it's just phenomenal, and it's, it's the kind of guy that I would like, I always said, eh, I'd like to be like that. You don't see it growing up because you just say, oh, he's my dad. You know, you grew up and this, everything's wonderful. And that he really, how many people he touched and what a difference he made for everybody. You know, and not just the people here, not the people he knew, but people that he didn't even know. That's what he made his life about. And, yeah, got quite a legacy. You know, he really believed in us and we believed in him. And together, we just, everything was a big collaboration. He gave us the chance to do what we did best and he did what he did best. Uh, every time I pick up my guitar to play, I'll be re reminded of Phil's encouragement and uh, delight that uh, I could be 19 or 20 and maybe not so smart and maybe not so talented, but he thought I could get there, and because of him, I did. Phil was the center of so many groups of people, but unlike other people, he wasn't the center of attention. Mm -hmm. He was the center so that he could make you the center of attention. Mm -hmm. He was the man behind the curtain in The Wizard of Oz, because he liked to run the show, but behind the, the curtain so that everybody else could figure out if they needed a heart, he would help them get their heart. If they needed a brain, that he'd help them get their brain. If they needed courage, he would help them get their courage. So he, he was the Wizard of Oz. He was the Wizard Gandalf, Wizard of Oz. And I'll miss him.